Right, after the last video, I said that there were some drastic final declutters that I wanted to do. And that is because I felt like our home was pretty much as minimalist, as extreme as we could get it. But after watching Cebu's channel and realising there is a whole new realm of things that we can achieve if we also think about things in a multifunctional way, it gave me a few ideas. Now I already thought that I was a pretty adaptable, imaginative person, but what I actually realised is there is still the odd thing in my home that perhaps I really was keeping there as just an extra comfort level but that isn't to say that my home would be without comfort if I got rid of it and that's what we're going to hope to achieve today because if I'm honest there are still things that if I'm willing to put that little bit more thought into that little bit more effort we could downsize even more now for anybody who's new here or even if you're not new here but you're wondering why I'm sort of going to these extremes it is really because our home is just so small and it, we just always feel like we have not got enough space. Both my partner and I are both the same. We just don't feel like we've got enough space. Rather than get a bigger apartment because you know we want to keep our finances to a minimum to save to go travelling, we're just going to declutter more because ultimately we're going to have to do that eventually anyway to go travelling with a possibility of emigrating as well. But I have to say that even when our time of travelling comes to an end and we go to settle down, I can't see me ever having much more invited back into my life because I think you get used to living a certain way. So anyway, let's take a look at this room. I'm going to put you in the corner <laughs> so that you can see the whole room. Now, there is not really much in here anyway, but there are still a few things that I could get rid of. So straight away what I was doing when I was problem solving is I realised that some things we have in minimalism or extreme minimalism for comfort and there's nothing wrong with that but the thing is that I don't have to go without the comfort I just have to be more thoughtful about how to achieve the comfort differently. So for instance I do not need these cushions but where I do really value having an extra cushion is in the bedroom. So we have our long lumbar cushion in the bedroom, which really comes in handy now because we only have one pillow each. So we definitely want to keep that. But what it means is that sometimes when we're in here on the sofa, if I really wanted an extra cushion, because it's actually me that likes the cushions, not my partner, I could just bring that in from the other room and the good thing about living in a small home is it's not like I have to go on a massive marathon walk across our home to get it. It is probably 10 actual footsteps away to get there and back to the bed. So the cushions guys are going. I'm going to start a pile but I don't know where. Where shall we start the pile? We'll start it by the wall so that in another shot, in fact I'll show you guys. Can you see? You can't quite see yet but you will be able to. We're going to start a decluttering pile. The next cushion going. Woo! <laughs> going out of focus there. The next thing, the throws. Now, I have always said that we do need a lot of throws because it does get incredibly cold here in England. Sometimes I look after my friend's dog Charlie and we like to be able to cover the sofa up but when I was really problem solving this and thinking about what else I could possibly declutter and whether I was you know as Sibu said over keeping things when really you might actually have a duplicate that you don't realise about I realised that we do have a spare set of sheets. Now in the unlikely event that sometimes and very occasionally Charlie comes and stays, we could use the spare spe we could use the spare set of sheets over the sofa. And the good thing about us having a combination washer and dryer is they're washed and clean within one day. So it's okay. I can use that as the spare set of sheets over the sofa when Charlie comes. So I don't have to keep all these extra blankets 
for if Charlie comes, you know, the just in case. Although the just in case does sometimes happen, it's not all the time and we do really have another alternative when I really think about it. So the question is which blanket will I keep and which blanket will I get rid of? Let's have a look. So while I'm down there in the, uh, what I like to call the cesspit at the back of the sofa, because that is what it always becomes. Even if, like I say to myself, right, I'm not gonna put anything down there other than the blankets. We have got blankets, but we've got something else that I'm sure you saw as I was getting those things out. So we've got these blankets that we normally use when Charlie comes to cover the sofa up. But they, they don't get used basically when Charlie is not here because we prefer, prefer to use a softer one on our persons and the falsa blankets I don't think are actually that soft. The cotton's quite rough even though they look nice so they are better I think as blankets that you sort of put on the ground or to sit on rather than have over you. So these two blankets they're going. Now I'm going to be very, very honest and throughout this decluttering today, if I have one that I am unsure about, we are going to put it in a maybe pile. Now this blanket, I've had it about 10 years, 10 years. And it is very, very soft. And what I like about it is it is ever so slightly weighted and it's great for an afternoon nap. I'm already convincing myself not to get rid of it, but what I'm going to say is the reason why I think I should get rid of it. We have another quilted blanket which is currently in the bedroom because it's actually been very cold at the moment which shows that we do use the other blanket in the bedroom for an extra cover up. Now what normally happens is on an evening my partner and I either use the quilted blanket or this but because when we're sitting at either side of the sofa our sofa is actually very very long. It's about four meters long maybe 3.5 and it's rare you can find a blanket that big so sometimes if we sit in at opposite ends we end up needing a blanket each because it's so cold but this might be a case of to be more efficient with our space and so we don't feel like we've constantly got blankets covered up it's a case of two in and one out because I've seen some blankets that are four meters long so I'm actually thinking about getting rid of this and the quilted blanket so that we could actually have one that we share. And that could also be great as being an extra blanket over the bed. So it would do a lot more job than all these individual blankets do. So for now, we're adding this one to the pile. Let me show you all the piles so you get the gist. So that is the pile so far. Now, the other thing that I, uh, let's change angles so you don't all get bored. Hi guys. <laughs> so the other thing was when I decided to get rid of the pillows on the bed, the memory foam I was reluctant to let go of and I thought maybe I could make my own like little cushions with some of the linen pillowcases that we had. And I thought it was a great idea but they've ended up just looking an absolute mess behind the sofa. They've like lost the shape. Originally they were sort of, we do it a little bit better. They were just sort of like that. And I was thinking about having these on the sofa instead of the cushions because they were then they were more like multifunctional pillows. It hasn't worked out. So the inners are going, if not the pillowcases, but for now, so you get the idea, I'm gonna put them on the pile. Now, the next one, now that our room is looking, let me get you up here. That's currently the room. That is how minimal everything is really looking. Don't mind my breakfast plate in the kitchen. <laughs> so what I'm thinking is, 
what else can I get rid of? I'm gonna show you. Let me just set the tripod back up. Now, I do like my little corner where I've got Gina, my sage, and my homemade lavender diffuser. For now, I'm gonna leave that alone because I like to just have, you know, the odd little thing in the background for the videos. Because like a few people pointed out, there's a danger of extreme minimalism that you make your home so blank that for future videos, when you're occasionally doing videos that aren't just about extreme minimalism, it's too blank and too boring for viewers watching. If I lived here and I didn't make YouTube content, I probably wouldn't care and I'd get rid of them. But I don't want to make the backgrounds of other videos that I do on slow living and topical discussions and things, I don't want to make the backgrounds of them boring. And that is why I also keep the odd plant. However, I have also been thinking about the plants. Now what we'll do today is we'll just move them around, but I decided to do definitely only one, one plant in this room. Now I currently have it next to the mirror because I think that's a really good idea because then you almost get the illusion that the plant is bigger, I'm going out of focus, that the plant is bigger or that you've got more plants, which might not necessarily actually be a good thing for minimalism, but I don't like that one being down there on the floor, so I'm going to move it. I'll just take that over here guys and I'll be right back. Now, one thing that I've been giving serious thought to, and you're probably all going to be astounded, it's probably going to be another case of the crisis of the Wabi Sabi table that I know some of you were really sad that I, I haven't currently got rid of it, but it is waiting, I've sort of decided I am getting rid of it, it's waiting to sell. Which is, by the way, is what I will be doing with a lot of these things. Some of these things will be selling, some will be going to charity. I always do declutter responsibly. So the Wabi Sabi table, I've definitely made my mind up it's going, but it's currently still waiting to sell. But, the tatami cushion, that's just a mat that we have on top of it for drinks and things. Now, I do really like this, but like I often say in extreme minimalism, there's a question sometimes of liking things and whether you really need it. And at the time, I did need it, which is why I bought it. But then when we really start moving, thing around, moving things around, rethinking things at a later date, we perhaps realise that they weren't as essential as, the, as what we thought. Or it happens that we got something else that we realised could do the job. So, what I realised the other day is, we mainly use this now, not as a little seat, although we do when friends come round, but not very often, and I'm happy to sit on the floor if my friends are here. This mainly gets used to just put our drinks on. And I tend to sit at the other side, which means I just put my drink on the radiator shelf. So really all we need is a little thing, tool, device, for my partner put his, to put his drink on. Now I was thinking back to what we did for a brief time when we'd got rid of our other coffee table before we got this, and my partner did this. Let me move you so you can see. So there, there he is, <laughs> pretend in his seat. And he would come through, bring the stool momentarily, because we can only be in one place at once, and sit here. And he can use the stool as a little side table. And that is the great thing about stools. They can also be tables. You know, anything with four legs and a flat surface, it really is a multifunctional thing. So it got me thinking, we really don't actually need that. So like I said with the brown blanket, that was a little bit unsure of, I'm actually thinking that that is the, in the maybe pile too. But I'm almost certain that now I've discovered that we can probably just do that and then easily put it. But let's count how many steps it is back to the kitchen. Are we ready? You'll hear me off camera. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> that is how small our apartment is. And I sometimes think that on the camera, you guys can't see really the full floor plan and layout of just how truly small it is. So, this is going. So then I'm left <laughs> with this very large flat surface. Now, I was thinking of doing something a little bit, oh, I've got a hair in my mouth. I was thinking of doing something a little bit different with, in our hallway, because the one area that really does annoy me is where we still have our hat 
hat shelf it's not a hat shelf what is it is it a hat stand it's a hat stand on the wall and we've still got one piece of sort of tree trunk dark wood out there but it doesn't really go with the rest of the stuff at the moment and it's a little bit clashing for my mind because that's another thing when i see extreme minimalist channels like i spoke about in sibu's video the last video that i did there are a few extreme minimalists out there but i personally am most inspired by ones that aren't just practical extreme minimalists although that's great i like ones i like extreme minimalists that really pay attention to still keeping it a little bit aesthetic and it not just being practical but it also being about interior and design and style and seeing how that can be achieved still with very few things and a lot of the extreme minimalists that I know of that isn't really the case they usually seem to be just pretty practically minded and don't really care that much about the aesthetic so I'm trying to still think about the aesthetic so this is an option for my hallway and things I might possibly do in there so let me take that through and then I'll be back right we have pretty much can I get you all on the big tripod so you can all see so guys I'm having to bloody bend down the room is just about as minimal as I think it can get now if I get rid of those things because currently I'm not prepared to get rid of the glass table I've been sitting at it in, and enjoying it because we do use it as either a dining table or a desk if I came up with another solution it's not immovable you know I could sell it but for now we will leave it especially now we've got no other thing to actually put our laptop on food on when we're eating etc except the stool so that leaves this corner by the mirror looking can you all see a bit let me tilt it a bit it's looking rather empty now that is a, maybe a good thing for minimalism but as some of you may know i've got this other monstera on these sort of leggy stilt things leggy stilts <laughs> i'll show you let me see what it looks like Now I think that looks quite cute over there as like a little background feature although when I actually do sort out the corner of the bedroom when the rail finally leaves the house and that is freed up that corner I may put that in the bedroom and bring the other monstera that was on the floor back I'm not sure but that's everything in here so what I'm also going to tell you all about sorry guys just getting some off the floor is something I was thinking about that Sibu actually said in his video now I'm going to try and turn it the other way so you can see but obviously when the light is then behind me it's going to be very difficult so we're going to have to try and deal with the lighting so let's go let's put you right over here and then you might be able to see if you think about it I started to wonder why when i only have very few items in this room i mean let's have a quick count up rug sofa projector projector shelf shelf for the sage the sage shelf for the diffuser the diffuser the mirror the plant the potos the table the two chairs and the other plant there are 15 items in this room if we don't count the curtains Oh, I nearly forgot my my partner's iPhone holder. So 16 items. Did I count the mirror? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, you get the picture. I've got under 20 items in this room. Sometimes I stand here and I think, if there's under 20 items in this room, why does it still feel not that minimal? Like, why do other people's rooms look more minimal when they don't particularly have less than what I have and I'm only speaking comparatively because I'm wanting to really feel like it is super super minimal and I realised that it is probably the curtains and it is probably also down to climate as again 
it's a climate factor because a lot of the minimalist channels I watch on YouTube they largely tend to be from a lot warmer countries than England and therefore nobody really has curtains they ha seem to all have blinds and obviously blinds go neatly up out of the way and you've not got these big things hanging down your whole wall now I can't get rid of my curtains because we live opposite a hotel I could consider it if we weren't overlooked like we are by the hotel but we are and then on top of that we have the projector and the projector although it can work in daylight it's definitely improved by just dimming the light in the room a little bit so I started to problem solve this now what I'm going to do because I don't want to regret it is I've double layered my linen curtains to block out the light the light more that keeps dimming behind me I'm going to take these curtains down today and see what it looks like I'm going to do it now with you guys and I'm just checking in the monitor for the light if after a couple of days of living without them I get used to it and I like it I'm also going to take the curtain rail down curtain rail curtain rail because we actually installed that and the ones that the landlord provided are just the ones that are on the outer track of the bay window do you know guys interesting fact about bay windows so this is bizarre because this property is 200 years old and i am convinced that we have been making bay window types in the uk for much longer than perhaps the ones in san francisco but apparently that's where bay windows got their name from because lots of houses had them built on so they could see down and look out even though all the houses were side by side they could stand in the bay window and look out and see san francisco bay so that's how they got the window interesting little fact i love little facts like that anyway i i'm going to take this down now and we are going to see what it looks like let's go i'll speed this part up for you guys actually i wasn't that slow but let's have a look so it instantly looks a little bit more minimal but I do think the big black rail, which is just off camera, is a little bit of an eyesore, so I have to just imagine that that's gone for a few days. Let me tidy this area up and then I'll be right back with you. Right, so that is what the curtain area is currently looking like. It already feels like it has given this sense of extra space just by getting rid of the bigger curtains. I really don't think there is much more I can get rid of in the living room at this point or that I would want to. I'm going to do a pan in a minute so you can all see it all. One thing that I also thought about was I realise that our second projector is a little bit unnecessary and I may do a future video of things that I plan to sell and not simply get rid of although some of these things I am selling but I'm talking about perhaps the bigger more shocking items because for instance this one may shock some of you who didn't see my stories over on Instagram is that I actually got rid of my coffee machine recently but it was more of a downsize like a one in one out because that one was really quite expensive and I'm trying to recoup funds back. I would like to go on a solo trip to Japan. My partner has too many work commitments but we don't want it to eat into our other travel funds so I'm recouping bits of money back where it won't affect us really and where eventually if we decide to emigrate or sublet here we're not leaving items of extremely high value in the apartment so I swapped the coffee machine for a downgraded version but it still does the job I also am thinking about getting rid of this projector because we've got two now we did get two for a reason at the time it was that my partner used to also game plugging in and plugging out plugging out unplugging the ps4 it can really damage sort of your usb and your hdmi ports and i didn't like the you know how messy the double adapters looked so i thought i'm just going to get a second projector now that my partner doesn't do that anymore he got rid of his gaming 
console you know it's unnecessary so although you may see it in the background for quite a while of the videos in the background of the videos it is probably going to be going at some point now that means that the other projector which is even tinier it's like the size of a can it can go on the smaller shelf because that is a floating bookshelf which means we can get rid of the book and the little invisible shelf that's on the wall is actually only about the size of my hand and it's white so it would just completely merge in with the wall because that's what I like as well I like that if things are the same colour as the background they obviously are almost invisible to the naked eye and they kind of merge in and they're not like jutting out like extra visual noise that being said I would love to continue today and go around the whole apartment and do everything decluttered today but this video is already getting quite long so we'll break it up perhaps per room and I have another few ideas planned for a new declutter method that I've thought about myself that I think would be a really good trial idea of how to help people declutter more so we're going to trial that in real time and not just discuss it but actually trial it so we might do that in the bedroom or even in the hallway I think that's it but I'm feeling very inspired and I'm already thinking I like not having the curtains up there which might mean that 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 curtain rail can actually go and for once the back of there has literally just got our hoover our vinyl player and my partner's box of vinyls I'm liking how minimal this feels catch you all in the next one bye